Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. I am in Pokhara, Nepal. Today I want to talk about this whole Navalny death in prison, in a Russian prison. Because, uh, I, you know, I do controversial topics and this is quite a controversial topic. On social media at the moment, now again, I'm not an expert in these things. I am a lay person and the whole thing about my channel is I want to talk about controversial things. I want to, would like to have discussions about it. I would like to have interviews about it as lay people because just because we are not experts, it doesn't mean we don't have to research these things or have interest in it or uh, have opinions about it or perspectives. Because we are not robots, we don't simply follow. We have to understand and participate in society. So this is why I do that. So in the comments, don't talk to me about who do you think you are, nye, 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 because that is just absolute stupidity. Okay, who I am, I am a human being living in the world, in a society, and whatever happens in societies obviously will affect me. If it doesn't affect you, good for you. You are so fortunate. But unfortunately, things affect my life, it affects things I do, it affects my opinions, my perspectives, etc. Okay, so let's crack on so Navalny before the news came out that he died in a Russian prison I knew absolutely nothing of the guy even now all I know about him is that he was anti-Putin he's a put in opposition and uh, darling of the West. That's all I know about him. I have no interest in learning anything more about him. Not important in my life because I'm not a Russian and it's not affecting my life personally. Okay. But why am I talking about this? We'll get to that. So, first of all, I want to say condolences to his family, not that they're ever going to watch this video, but, you know, as one human being to another human being, I can understand loss of a loved one, I understand grief. So, condolences to his family, his friends, and everybody who knew him and loved him and cared for him. Okay, right, so let's give let's some little bit of background. So, the background is that he died in prison. He was opposition in opposition to Putin, pro-West, as I mentioned before. Uh, and not only did he die in prison, he allegedly was killed by Putin. So, allegedly, because there's been no court case yet, because uh, usually, well, the country that I come from, before you can uh, say that someone killed someone, uh, you have to take the case to trial. So this has not gone to trial yet. So we will say allegedly killed by, by Putin. And um, contrary to social media and especially the West who, re who rely on the, um, who rely on trial by public opinion, where I come from, we have a difference. Because I think we have a little bit different education. Our education is, you can say what you want, but at the end of the day, you have to wait for the trial. Okay? So, I'm going to use the word allegedly because, like I say, I'm not from the West. Okay, right. So, continuing on. Um, I have to look at my notes because I wrote it down. Okay? So, okay. So, these are a few things I want to address as a layperson, as a non-expert in geopolitics, politics, Russian politics, US, whatever, 
just as a person with a brain, a functioning brain at that, functioning retinas, functioning ears, you know, so I just want to go through this. Okay, right, so first thing is, for me it's like, okay, let's say Putin did have him killed. Possible. People get killed in prison all the time by their governments. We know that. Happened a lot in my country, a lot. Probably still happening. But during the apartheid system, apartheid regime, who that was the MO, that was the mode of operations within the prison system. Any political op uh, opponent got killed. Just off my head here, Steve Biko, cry the beloved country, right? So I won't be surprised, but let's say if Putin did have him killed. I would say, like I said, as a normal, just lay person, I would think it is a very stupid move. Now, why I say this is number one. Putin's timing is totally off. Because um, he just finished an interview with Tucker Carlson, which, I don't know, over 150 million views. I think by now it's probably two, over 200 million views. And um, that uh, interview, from what I can see on the internet, it was accepted as positive. It was enlightening, informative. And I can see more positive remarks concerning that the interview. Not that people really like Tucker Carl Carlson or they like Putin. It's got nothing to do with that. But just based on the facts, just on what was being spoken about and based on journalism, what j real journalism means. And what it means to be presidential, to be a president who is to, someone who has to put their country first and who must know their country. Um, so I would think it's that is an extremely stupid move on his part to go and kill his opponent when he has now this like kind of glowing uh, perception about him around the world. For me, as a layperson, not even at his level, I think it's a very stupid move that he made, if he did it. Second thing is, he has an election that's coming up. So this is not the right time to be killing off your political opponent, especially when the political opponent does not present a threat because the political opponent is already in prison. So can't even uh, campaign or it's not up for for the election. And just based on my Russian friends and just my knowledge I know of Russian politics, very little, but it's enough just to, to make this comment. He was not even like a favorite. So, I don't know if Putin is also going, let's say if he did do this, if he's going down the Joe Biden dementia route, you know, or I don't know what he was thinking, but it just does not make sense. It is stupidity on big scale to do that. The other thing about killing him in prison, this just gives a very bad standing for Putin with the Russian people, with the voters. Because let's say even if, if, if uh, again, this is just me thinking, even if the voters, there was no way that they would have voted for this Navalny, and I mean, even they can't, he's in prison. Uh, even if they were pro-Putin, this is not a move that any voter wants from a presidential candidate. From you know, from because you don't want your your president to be threatened by his opposition and kill them. 
This is not what most, well, this is me as a voter. This is not what I would want. Doesn't matter how much I like the, the person that's running for, for the pres presidency. That would be like a total no-no as far as I'm concerned. So again, why, I don't know why Putin, again, if he did do this, why he would do this? It just doesn't make sense. It's stupid. Right. The other thing is, why would he give the West more ammunition to vilify him? The West already, they have this perception of him, you know, he's a, he's a villain, he's evil, he's worse than Hitler, he's Satan, whatever, everything that's bad that you can mention. Uh, why is he giving them more ammunition? Again, if he did have this guy killed, why would he give the West this ammunition? Especially when in his interview with Tucker, he said he wants to bring the fight, the, the, the Ukraine special military operation, he wants to bring the fight to the table not on the battlefield. He wants to negotiate. Is he stupid to say this thing and then go do this thing? Or is he, does he have cognitive issues like Joe Biden that he can't remember what he said and then goes, does another thing? Because I don't know. Like I said, I would not have done that. And I'm not even a president. I'm just a normal person that doesn't even have a job, unemployed, no money, no income, like zero money, living from day to day. But I wouldn't even make, make that kind of uh, mistake by saying one thing and then going doing the uh, complete opposite thing that I know is going to turn everything upside down. Extremely stupid on his part. Again, if... He did do it. Okay, so there's also a lot of clownery around this whole thing. This is the part that I that I really want to talk about because I'm more about what's happening with the normal people. So the clownery around around this is that the West, okay especially like USA, UK, I've noticed they are so focused on what happened to this Navalny guy in the Russian prison. Totally focused, totally against it. Like up in arms, you should see the internet is blowing up. But at the same time, just yesterday and today, you have the extradition hearing of Julian Assange. No one's talking about that. They are not talk, there's no focus on this. These clowns are more concerned with some Russian dude in Russia, which is a different country which is a politician that has got nothing to do with, with, with their country, rather than someone who is from their country, well, not from their but who is a, a, a Westerner, because he's Australian, but he's a Westerner held in a Western prison and who might get extradited to another Western country. And his only crime was to bring the truth to people, to practice real journalism. This is what I found find is clownery on big scale. What the hell do you care about Navalny and, and Russia? You can use it as a whataboutism, yes. I don't have a problem with that because, like I said in my short, if you want equal rights for all, then whataboutism is relevant. 
So you could be concerned to the extent that you use it by saying, if we are so concerned about what Russia did to, to, to Navalny, we should be even more concerned about what the UK and the US is doing to Julian Assange. Like, so what about Julian Assange? Another YouTube blogger, a political commentator, his name is Gonzalo Lira. He's a US citizen. He also died in Ukraine, in a Ukrainian prison. And he was detained, he, he was imprisoned for speaking out against Zelensky about the corrupt Ukraine government and about the war in Ukraine. He got imprisoned for that. He got killed in prison. He died in prison. So what about him? Where is the outrage? If you are Westerner, right? That is your citizen. He's a US citizen. You care more about some Russian citizen in a Russian prison than what you care about a Western citizen in a Western prison and a Western prisoner who is in a Ukraine prison. This is the clownery. Now, could this clownery just be a distraction from what, what is happening with, the, the, with Julian's case? Because Julian's case is happening today and tomorrow. Because it looks like it, because everyone is so distracted by, oh, this guy was killed by Putin, the evil guy. Da, 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 da. That Julian Assange case is like being pushed aside. So is it a distraction? Was it just blatant clownery from the masses? And the masses is like us, people like us. We are the masses. We are the ones that are focusing on some, something that's got nothing to do with with, with our country. Because I see even people from my country are concerned about what's going on there. Why don't you concern yourself about Julian Assange? Why not? Why don't you concern yourself also with Gonzalo Lira? They're all human beings. You know why? Because you're all pro uh, anti Putin, that's all. It's not about Navalny. Oh, it's just a distraction. I don't know. I write here, the West is fuming over what is happening in Russia. Well, the things that's happening right on their own doorstep to their own people, they turn a blind eye to. Gonzalo Lira is a USA citizen, so he's from the West. Julian Assange is a... a Australian citizen. He is from the West. Why don't you care about the two of them? You know why? Because you are a clown. That's what you are. You are a clown of the first order. Okay. <clears throat> but the good thing about this whole Navalny episode is that Now, all the clowns are very supportive of Russia. Not Putin, but of Russia. And the Russian people, which is a good thing, because since 2022, there has been so much Russia-phobia. I've seen it. I've been traveling Nepal, India. I meet all the foreigners. And you can see they are, they were so anti-Russians. They don't even want to ride in the bus with them or there'll be fights and they'll be screaming at each other and all this. But now, everybody's now, oh, Navalny is a Russian that suffered. Oh, the Russian people are suffering under Putin. So this is very good. So this is a very good thing that I can say is happening now. And uh, even before, you're not allowed to put a Z 
uh, like as a profile or just even in your in the comments. Now it's Zeds in the comments. I can put as many Z. It's like remember when we we can do Slava with Ukraine. Yeah? This one. It's okay. So now we can put Zeds. That's also okay. Can have a big Z here. I should have put a big Z here. And free Assange here. Hmm. I can still write it. Yeah, now you can have a big Z. And it's okay. So this is good. So Z in the comments. Because the Russophobia was ugly. Remember when the guy, the Russian, the young 23-year-old Russian boy got killed by the shark in the Red Sea? Remember all the very horrible things they were saying about that, about Russians, about how they're glad that the shark ate him and all this kind of stuff. Remember that? That's not happening anymore. Now, everybody's kind to Russians. Everyone's kind to the motherland, Russia. So, you know, it's a good thing that happened. It's a good thing that the West is so pro Navalny because it has put Russia in a better light. And all my Russian friends, don't hide out it. Don't hide away anymore. Come out. And Zed's in the comments.